This well, conference will now be recorded. It's in your hands. God bless you. God bless you and good morning to, to each and every one. Thank God for allowing us to see this new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your holy name. We praise you this morning, Father. We lift you up. We magnify your name, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise this morning, Father. We bless your wonderful name. We exalt your holy name, Father. We lift your name on high. We lift your name above every other. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your wonderful name, Father. We give you the fruit of lips this morning, Father, for you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to receive glory and honor. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your wonderful name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. All glory, honor, and praise belong to you, Father. And Lord, we thank you, O God, for waking us this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see this new day, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy extended to us. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness and kindness to us, Father. Thank you for your unchanging love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for every blessing and every benefit. We thank you, Lord, this morning, O oh God, for waking us in our right minds. We thank you, Lord, for a fair portion of health. Thank you, Lord, for the movement of our limbs. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are to us. And Lord God, as we come once more, O oh God, we look forward to hearing from you, O oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you would use me as your vessel, O oh God. Speak to me, O oh God. Speak through me, Father. Oh God, we, we expect, oh God, to you, for you to do something different this morning, Father. We look to you, my God, and we ask, oh God, that you, oh God, would take hold of this time, Father, and you, oh God, would speak to every heart on this line this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for, oh God, Apostle Gaines and Pastor Gaines. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are using them oh God, to build up the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for every soul that has come onto this line this morning. We ask your blessing on every household. Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. And we say, Lord, have your way this morning. Have thine own way, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This morning, February 16th, we once more are looking to hear from God. Hallelujah. And this morning, our scripture is taken from Habakkuk chapter 2, and we'll be reading verses 1 and 2. And it reads, I'm reading from the, the New Living Translation, and it reads, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. And then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. Hallelujah. So in our scripture here, we see um, Habakkuk has a complaint. And mainly the complaint is, God, why are you allowing your people to go through this at the hands of these evil people? That's from the previous chapter. But God tells him, God answers his complaint by telling him to take, take some notes, take good notes. He wants him to be accurate in what he has to say to him so that he, Habakkuk, will be able to share it with others. And you know, that's, that's what God is to us. 
and that's how he treats us. God wants us to be informed. So he comes to us, he speaks to us. So much so, he has provided us with 66 books so that we may know his will. We don't have to wonder about how God feels about a particular subject. We just have to read what he has written. And this is the importance of us reading the Bible. If I had a title for this, uh, this devotional this morning, it would be write it down. Write it down. God has spoken. Write what he has spoken to your heart this morning. God speaks to us individually. And as such, we should write what he says to us. And based on our private audiences with him, we need to cherish what he has spoken to us. But we should go further than that, not just cherish it but put it into practice. It comes back to that verse. Don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of it also. So as we look at scripture, we see that God had a private audience with Moses on Mount Sinai. In Exodus 24 and 12, he said, the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay there. And I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments I have written for their instruction. And their instructions, meaning the instructions of the, the Israelites. So he wrote the Ten Commandments on tablets for Mo Moses to preserve. The, the beautiful thing about this is these were instructions for the Israelites to live by. God brought them out of captivity and had a land waiting, a flourishing land waiting for them. But you see, God goes to the extreme. He had a place waiting for them, but he also had instructions for them to live by so that they could show that they were his special people. And how were the instructions? The instructions were written so that they would have it. And their teachers could teach it to them. He even made plans to have these instructions stored in the ark, which still had not been built. In Exodus 25 and 16, it says, then put in the ark the testimony which I will give you. That's how serious God takes what he has said to us. And even when Moses came down from that mountain with those two first tablets and was angry and broke them. Well, I shouldn't say broke, but shattered them. God had Moses become a part of the, the process in the redo because he, he, he told Moses to cut two new tablets so he could write on them what had been previously given to him. In Exodus 34, 27 through 29, it reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Then Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. Now, here again, Moses have the, the, the covenant 
once more. But this time, there is no fuss in the camp. There is no fuss in the camp because the people have learned a serious lesson. Because over 3,000 of them were wiped out. Or let's say killed in the previous go round. So now they were waiting with expectancy for what Moses had to say to them. In Deuteronomy 5, Moses shared with, well, in Deuteronomy 6, the, Moses shared what was on those tablets. And they were told, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is what God wanted Moses to bring to the people's attention. This is what they had to do. He wanted them to take this word seriously. He wanted them to put it into practice. He wanted it to be in their faces. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Remember this word. Put it into practice daily. My question to us today is, what are we doing with the commands that God has given to us? Are we keeping them that close? Are we allowing God to, to use them in our lives? Or are we using them as God has placed them in our lives? Maybe the question should be, did we write them down? But before I, I, I uh, go too far without reading, let's get to the, the, the devotional. I tend to get um, excited about this stuff. <laughs> so our commentary tells us, write it down. That's what God told Habakkuk. Isaiah, Moses, and John, and probably quite a few other prophets when he spoke to them. His words were important enough not to be forgotten or unintentionally edited when told to others. So God wanted his word to be spoken as he brought it forth. Again, we go back to the, the, to the, the, the 66 books. What, what are we told? Do not add or take away anything from it. He wanted them inscribed for the sake of clarity and permanence. Many people, even from future generations, would be able to read what he had said. That's good advice. Journaling what God has told us will help us remember it and share it with others. Unlike the biblical prophets, we aren't writing words that will become scripture. So the imperative isn't quite the same as it was when God instructed them to do it. But it's helpful to keep track of what God has said over time. When we look back at this journal, we can determine whether we are following the instructions he gave us and remembering the lessons he taught us. Casual hearers don't record what they have heard, and a week later, they may not even remember it. Attentive hearers, however, are diligent about following God's words and applying them. Just as a couple may keep old love letters or chronicle their love in a diary, we celebrate our relationship with God when we preserve what he has said. We can't afford to risk letting God's words fall to the ground without applying them. 
He speaks in order for lives to change. The best way to honor his voice is to respond and change according to what he says. And the best way to respond and change is to write down what he has told us and cling to it over time. When we do, we will be able to appreciate how the relationship has grown, how he has invested in us, how he has led us step by step, and how his direction today builds on what he has told us in the past. So Pastor T. Green here is really giving us a, a, a lesson in what journaling is about and how it could benefit us. And I know, like uh, some of you, I like some of you, we, um, journaling is, uh, we scratch our head about that. It's not something we have done. But maybe it's something we need to look at. And hopefully by the end of this, um, this, this presentation, we may feel different about journaling. The prayer that goes with this is, Lord, very appropriate, Lord, journaling may never have been my forte, but your words are too valuable for me to forget them. Help me to write them down accurately and remind me to review them frequently. Teach me to treasure your voice. And really, this, this prayer is the essence of what Pastor Tigrin is speaking about. Matter of fact, the last, the last sentence says it all. Teach me to treasure your voice. God is speaking to us, not for speaking sake. God is speaking to us so that we can know his mind for us individually. We can know what he wants us to do, what he wants for us. And if we hang on everything that God says, we may as well write it down because we can always track back and see where he has brought us from. Hallelujah. So we, we are talking about God speaking to us and us writing it down. In Psalm 119 and 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that's a great verse. We can hide it or we can write it. But the importance of it is allowing it to work in our lives. It's allowing whatever God has told us to become a part of our lives, meaning we are practicing what it says. And if we have written what God has given to us, we will realize that it's small bites that we have, that we can chew over time and measure how far we have come or how close we have held to what God has told us. Our, <clears throat> our adherence to what he has already given to us will determine how far and how fast we move ahead spiritually. Keeping a journal is a good way of remembering what God has done for us. In the interesting thing, in, in, Bible, in the Bible days, as we go back, they didn't have journals. So they would commemorate or memorialize an event. In Exodus 12 and 11, the Passover was celebrated by the Israelites for the first time to remind the people of God delivering them from the hands of the Egyptians. 
The Passover was a, a celebration instituted by God and was to be celebrated on the 10th day of the first month of each year. This involved, the, this was to remind the people of God passing over the homes of the Hebrews because they had placed the blood of a lamb with no defect on their door frames. And the Lord struck, but the Lord struck the Egyptians, every firstborn in the home of the Egyptians was put to death. That was something that the Israelites had to remember. And as I think about it, we have had some Passovers in our lives. God had passed over some stuff in our lives. But it wasn't because of the blood sprinkled over our door frames. It's the blood that ran from Calvary's cross. It's the blood that Jesus, Jesus shed for us. He made a way that God will pass us over when we come up short. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also see in Joshua 4, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, God said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you what these stones mean, tell them that the floor of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So we see in, in, in this verse, and in this passage, I should say, the stones were to be a memorial of what God had done for the Israelites. It was going to be what God had done for them was going to be journal in stones and in their hearts. But we know some the, the older folk would die. But the stones were there as a memorial of what happened. So in short, this was their journal of what God had done for them. And sometimes it's easy, it's easy, as we see even in the lives of the Israelites after all God had done for them. And although the word was before them, although the prophets told them time and time again of what God's word said, they still went astray. They still choose to do opposite of what God had told them to do. But today, we have that opportunity where we can make sure that we write down what God says to us. And again, we write it not to put it away, 
but to reflect on it daily that we can be we can walk in obedience to what god is saying have you written down all that god has has said to you as any one of us it's a reminder to us when things look bleak we all have testimonies of what god has has brought us through but sometimes we need to be reminded of where we once were to avoid complacency. And the interesting thing is, <laughs> the way we are reminded at times is through difficulties, through trouble. But again, if we are keeping that journal, we can look back and recognize, oh, God has been with me. God has been faithful. God has brought me through in the past, and he will do it again. And if I could be, if I can give you some, some benefits to journaling, it's a reminder, journaling is a reminder of God's faithfulness to us. It's when we look back, we would recognize that it's hope when it seemed hopeless. It's a way to ponder God's words. As a matter of fact, Psalm 111 and 2 says, Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in him. Hallelujah. We can use journaling as a means of expressing ourselves to God. You see, expressing ourselves to God, we have that confidence in God that we can, he, he wants us to express ourselves. God has worked in our lives. He has called us friends. So we can go to him. We can tell him clearly how we feel. We don't have to hold it back. He knows what our thoughts anyway. Why not speak to him? In our Psalm 62 and 8, it says, Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. Hallelujah. Journaling is another way too to help us to grow closer to God. It also helps us to be more honest with God and ourselves. You see, when we speak what we have in our hearts, we are being true to ourselves and we are allowing God in. And again, as I said, God knows what's in our hearts. Let's be open to him. One of the other benefits from it is it helps us to track our growth in Christ. It also helps us to slow down and reflect. You see, as much as these are benefits of journaling, nothing comes of it if we don't do it, it's incumbent on us to see the benefits of this for ourselves and our walk with the Lord, to apply them to our lives. It's an opportunity in just writing, we can release uncomfortable emotions. It's also a way of keeping track of what God revealed to us as we probably heard a sermon or we heard some teaching. Again, it's on us if we want God, if we want to remember what God says to us. God is speaking. Are we writing? God is speaking. Are we benefiting from what he is saying? 
uh, is our remembrance that good that we can allow it to go past us without jotting it down? In the end, it's in, it's up to us what how we want to handle what God has said to us. But Dr. Tigrin or Pastor Tigrin here is encouraging us that journaling is one way or is a good way of remembering what God has said that we can know for sure this is where God has led me. This is where God has, this is what God has delivered me from. So as we look back, we can see how God has been there alongside us all the time. So when that next spot of trouble comes, we have something, we have a memorial to look back on. Because God has shown himself faithful through and through. God bless you. Back to you, Apostle.